Today I'm having a look at some analysis models in a real-time physics engine and with the wind acting across how it might stand up or fail if I was to get rid of some of these bracing members for example or what would happen if we got rid of those yellow members there on this bridge and what's happening at each step so what I've got here is a simplified suspension bridge structure but I've got it in a physics, real-time physics model so we can not only see where the stresses are going to go but we can visualize what's going to happen if some of these members fail or buckle so for starters I'll just run it with no missing members and we can see what's happening over time now this is very much exaggerated obviously in real life it'll just be a tiny little amount of deflection but it it shows what's actually happening to a typical bridge now you'll notice that the colors correspond to the forces with the red being compression and the green being tension you'll also notice that I've got four support points two at this end and two at this end the difference with these ones being that they're released in the X direction so is that these are able to slide in one direction only now that could be locked but that gives has implications on where the forces go and also you need to resist those forces at the end so structurally they can be designed either way but so let's just see what happens if we do fix it at the end so there you go so one thing to note is the force the compression force are now concentrated at these ends and slightly less in the middle and there will be a huge big reaction force at all these support points now so if I undo it again you can see not as much force here more force here no compression more tension there But yeah, in this situation, you've got a huge force going into the ground where you're supporting the bridge. And another thing to think about is how this bridge is going to behave in uh, temperature changes. So as this bridge gets hot and cold, the metal's going to expand and contract. And where are those forces going to end up? so that's why sometimes that's released somehow maybe not for a huge bridge like this but for a lot of structures you want to release the support point if you can at some point and have a movement joint so that you can deal with those forces resulting from the steel expansion and contraction due to change in temperature so now that we know where our big forces are let's just see what happens if we start some of these members would fail so for example we've got huge tension down the bottom what would happen if both of these failed for example so if I just apply that and we run it from scratch we'll see what happens now because these are fixed it's sort of holding together but I think you'd find there's an even huger reaction at the end so what happens if we also delete these members up the top 
Well, obviously you don't have a bridge anymore. The whole thing's falling to bits, and rotating around the supports. Now if I release the ends, I wonder what would happen if I went back a step and just deleted those lower two members. So you can see this is pushing out further. Further and further. And it's sort of trying to bend all these sections. And it's putting heaps of bending on here. Try and flatten it out. So let's try something else. So let's see what happens if we take out one of these supports instead. I'll just reset it. So you can see this section at the back is taking more force than the one at the front now. And the reverse is happening in tension, the one in the front it's taking more than the back one. And you can see it's all gone lopsided, which sort of makes sense. So what would happen, for example, if I took those out, and those as well. I'll just reset that. Funnily enough, that's actually equalizing it out. Oh no, it's starting to turn now because it's pretty unstable. Although, although it was stable for a little while. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's completely twisted away from these supports. Upside down bridge, nice. Now it's reversed, you got tension at the top, or what used to be the top, compression at the bottom cord. Now what would happen if we deleted all these intermediate members which are holding the curves apart? Let's see that. So even though it's still arching a bit, I've got a feeling it's not going to have enough to keep it up eventually because this isn't uh, resisting any compression. There we go. Yep, it's all just fall <laughs> falling into a, a heap. And that's a catenary, that is. It's just uh, bits of wire basically, no strength at all, because we got rid of those rigid um, supports which hold the tension and compression members away from each other. So let's just see what happens if we change it slightly so that we've still got some support in there. Is that enough? Doesn't look like it is enough. Let's try a few more. Oh no, it's kept a, it's kept some sort of structure there. Let's try this one. Again, it's it's keeping itself together a bit, but not really. It's it's pretty much a fail. It's not really not very effective at all. So how about we just get rid of some edge ones only? Oops, I have to reset that. Not very effective. So if I reset it by just 
setting is pretty useless fact I think uh, this section there that's much more effective and if I lock it off obviously it's pretty good so there's one last thing let's just see what happens if two of the supports fail all goes sideways oh, that makes sense pretty obvious really interesting to see how the tension and compression move as it as it falls over you got tension here you're getting more and more compression so in real life a lot of these would be buckling at different points so that is this would be all a twisted mess by now probably so here I'm running a physics model again with a very simple building it's a composite slab with some steel columns and some bracing and I'm looking at the lateral stability of it so I've actually got a wind acting in the X direction you can't see it here but it acts from left to right across the page uh, across the screen so if I run that you can see it's real, relatively stable now obviously this is pretty exaggerated but it shows the effect so what would happen if I took out some of this bracing for example so I got rid of those bracing elements it's all going to fall in a heap although interestingly this one little brace is struggling to keep a corner up we get rid of that as well it all just falls in a heap which we expect in the wind okay so now if I go back to the original now I want same in the top story if I get rid of some of this bracing that falls in a heap but if I just put in a couple of elements maybe this one this one and these two let's see how that does that's enough to keep it up there now I do have these other elements as well so if I reset this top story I go down to the bottom and I remove all of it except a couple so it's enough to keep it there it might not be in the deflection limits that you want but say if I got rid of some of these bracing elements the other way so so I'm just gonna delete all of that and just keep these ones at the end and I've got these two in the corner there let's see how that goes that's enough to keep it up what happens
happens if I get rid of this one as well? No, nope, struggling. No, nope, it's gone. So that shows you that even though I've got the wind acting from left to right here, I can't get away with having no bracing in the other direction. At the moment at the bottom floor I've only got bracing that's going to resist wind that, at both ends of the building, but I don't have anything the other way. And although initially it deals with most of the wind, eventually it falls over because the wind, the building isn't regular so it's trying to twist, it's trying to twist away and this bracing isn't quite enough to resist that. So to fix that I bet if I just put even one bracing bay the other way and ran that. Although deflections are still pretty bad, it's holding that together and we don't get a collapse. So let's just see how this minimum bracing compares to all the bracing I had. Yeah, quite a bit stiffer. So that's where you might need bracing for deflection control. Or obviously some of the, you've got to check the capacities of this bracing as well. So even though I had just two three bays there beforehand, might have been overloaded, or the, the stress is going to go through this uh, diaphragm as well. So you're probably unlikely to get enough for the whole building to go through this thin little deck. So that's why you need to distribute the bracing throughout the building. So this is a pretty useful tool to see real-time deflections in a physics engine. And it's pretty easy to import your existing analysis file, like an ETABS SAP2000 or SpaceGas. Or you could also get your Revit file uh, or your Rhino model and import them pretty easily straight into this physics model and play around with some bracing elements and see what happens in real time. You can also grab elements and give them a nudge to see what might happen. And of course you can take it a bit too far <laughs> sometimes. I oh know it bounced back there. But yeah, that got stuck there. So I've got to reset that. But yeah, overall, pretty good tool and interesting to see effects in real time. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful, and we'll see you in the next one.